Thank you, Ben. We will have more of the band just now. Um, the kicker. So we've been um, we've been journeying in this last while to make sense of our into files in the light of the kingdom of God, in the light of the calling that he has on our lives. Because you see, we know, but it's been clear that even in the church this has been quite fuzzy and a lot of people struggle to make kingdom sense of their job. And we spoke about the fact that first of all we need an adequate theology about it so we can understand where it comes from and what it is from God's perspective and second to have practical tools that will help us to position ourselves in the way that he would have us and I'm, I'm briefly going to run over that in the next two minutes then we're going to stop that model that we believe the Lord gave us to work through Many of you saw what Pastor Ross did on Wednesday and how he made that practical in his own life over the last 15 years. But we need to understand that if we understand works well, that we would not have the same particular divide anymore where we think certain jobs are more glorious than others and others have a specific, you know, I just have a specific rush job and I just have to do this accounting thing, but I just don't know how it relates to anything in the kingdom because we've had such a one dimensional view maybe of what the kingdom is and what work is and who God is and all of that. So um, I have done a lot of work in career counseling in my industrial psychology background um, and so from that place it's been a great passion of mine to make sense of this and make kingdom sense of it. So just to recap, we read in Genesis 1 that we are made in His image. We are made in His image. We are made in His image. Um, we are called to be imitators of Him. We read page 5 1. Because we are made in His image. He works. The first thing we read about Him is that He works. And He doesn't do pastoral work. He does earth moving. And all kinds of um, like all kinds of incredible um, logical miracles and um, what would you call it? Yeah, let's say Earth moving to the next level, making the making the world. He works, and then he rests from his work. He makes us in his image, and the first thing he does when he made us, he said, the scripture said, he blessed them and said be fruitful and multiply fill the earth and subdue it and he gave them work the first thing man was given to do was work without compensation as a blessing that's where we sometimes struggle we think work is a curse and we have to do it for money but when we understand where it comes from we realize it's part of our identity in his image it was given as a blessing to us and that he provides so we will work with that's who we are then came the curse and the work of man was cursed because of sin he said it will be hard for you but didn't jesus die to free us from the curse so the new humanity the one freed by him those born again are freed from the curse under which the world is where work is hard and a curse and it is primarily just to make money. And once again, we get to redeem it to what it should be. Even in the companies we are in, in whatever way they function. But as entrepreneurs, we get to redeem the fact that it was, a, it was given to man as a blessing and to reflect their creator who works. And who doesn't do pastoral and missionary work only, but who has been designing clothes and artifacts and ships and has done carpentry work and was a great fisherman. 
terms of being a fisherman and a winemaker, he was a one in one. It was incredible. We, we've got an incredible well, winemaker here in our uh, communication this morning as well. Um, but he's done so many things throughout history that's been the work of God. We can't limit him to thinking that it is only the things we traditionally would say. It is the work of God. And it's a variety of words that bring heaven to earth. And, and we understanding that it's in his design that we should work and it should be a blessing and to redeem that we should we should seek and find what our job must be and that what we find would satisfy the longing in our hearts to live a purposeful life and we would understand and see the value of it in whatever it is that he would call us and it wouldn't feel like something secondary or something that just needs to make enough money to survive. We looked at this model that the world uses and that I've used um, in my consulting days as well, very simple. Um, and we debunked it when we compare it with scripture. We've realized that so many of us have been using this model to find what we should do because the world tells us what are you passionate about, what do you really love, what are you really good at, and what makes money. And if you can find something that satisfies those three, three things you do, it makes a lot of sense and it works really well. It's a worldly model. A lot of Christians have been using it just at a lack of of a better. But a lot of us are here and we've, we've even Christianified a lot of these things. Passion would say, it's, you know, calling because it's, it's burns on our heart and skills would call gifts and say, because God has given me this gift, I have to use it. And making money would say, oh, well, I have to provide, so I have to find something that makes money. And we've got this, this, this almost theology. Um, of work going around but it's clear from scripture that it says those who come to Christ must crucify the, have crucified the flesh with these passions and desires we come to Christ surrendering crucifying everything every passion we hold dear we crucify then there's a beautiful process where he gives us things where we know it's been received by we received it from him we, we heard it was confirmed it was it was birthed in us in his presence those passions we again need to crucify and surrender before they can be anything valuable like isaac so whether it's before we know that he's given these things to us and it's just our own our own passions um, or whether it's things that's clearly been given to us we surrender them to him so they can be remain pure and surrendered to christ um so so with regards to our passion, yes, he wants us in that place. Let him lead us there. Don't let us just say what I'm passionate about is what I must do. With regards to our skills, um, yes, we should upskill. Yes, the word of God says they would work with integrity of heart and skillfulness of hands. But we cannot only move within that circle because scripture clearly tells us. That he uses the foolish things of this world to shame the wise and the weak things. God found it strong. And he says that on uh, um, um, Paul writes and, and where Jesus told him that my, my strength would be made perfect in weakness. God also moves, uses us in our weakness so that he can be strong through them. That's part of the way that our journey with him is supposed to be. So we cannot only bring things to things we are good at and stick within them, but follow Jesus even when it is uncomfortable in the space we are in. With regards to provision, let us let He be our provider and we follow Him diligently because He says, seek first the kingdom and I provide for you. Don't seek to provide and then add the kingdom on, but you will provide for your family really well if you follow Jesus well. Remember we said some some say no, that Jesus wants me to provide for my family and Jesus wants me to follow him. So I choose the Jesus that says I'll provide for my family. 
And I, I don't want to be too open to get too much of the other Jesus that wants me to follow him radically and even may, maybe want to call me to let go of everything I have like a rich young ruler. So in essence we see these two Jesuses, but there is only one and it's the one that says follow me, seek my kingdom and I will provide for you. That would be the best way to provide for our families is to be in that place. Proverbs 23, 4 says it so well, it says do, do not toil, what does it say? Do not, do not toil to increase in wealth. Constantly cause now for whatever reason, but something as simple as that. It just says your work shouldn't be so you can have money. Because that's working under the curse. Your work is a blessing and to fulfill a kingdom purpose. The provision will come, but let God determine that and speak to that. Let us steward that well. So then we said, what kind of a model can we use? Um, and I believe God gave me this model and I'm, I, I'm overwhelmed by the fact that it is incredibly helpful in guiding me and I hope it will guide us as well. Can I just see, is there anyone that um, in the row that you're in there isn't, there aren't enough of these of these papers to go and workshop now? Is there anyone that needs one that doesn't have one? You can raise your hand and we can get one to you. There should be enough around. All right, so you're going to use that just now. But this would be a better model, and we're not going to go into the details of this that we did last week. But if we could ask, if we could ask God who He says we are, we see Jesus started His ministry by understanding who the Father said He is. That's the starting point. Affirmation from the Father, words of who you are. Over you. you are the light of the world, Jesus said. He's in the business of speaking identity over you. You should know what the Father says about you. When someone asks you, when the world comes against you, you should be able to recite the things that have been confirmed over your life. You should then, after that, that comes first. After that, we start asking him, what specific other things I'm called for? What's my life about on earth? Never do that without the identity thing, otherwise you would fall into works and just want to do whatever God called you to do, but you will never know who you are, and then you will be, you'll feel like an orphan running around trying to please a manager rather than a son that takes ownership of his father's business. But you, you're asking what you're called to do, and then also you must be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's lead in seasons in your life to know where am I supposed to be right now? To satisfy only one of these or two of them over even at the same time leaves a specific gap. You see that in that model. You might you might know who you are and where you should be right now, but you don't know what you call for, so you don't know the reason you are where you are where you are right now. You might know who you are and what you call for, but you don't know the season, so you don't know who you are where you should be right now. You might know what you are called for and where you should be right now, but you don't know who you are, and you'll just go into work tomorrow and we should stay clear from that. We move in faith from conviction. What's important to say is that even if you do not hear anything from God and you don't know anything about all of these, I think we'll need another battery. I think these ones are both at their end. Um, there's a whole Bible to obey, and you could start moving. You could start moving with the Word of God, and His Word will already give you more than enough things to do. But when we surrender our lives fully to Him, then these are the kind of things that He would lead us in, He would confirm to us. And we trust that He would do that and start to do that today. Because what it, what it comes down to, in essence, or what's the most helpful thing I have in my life, and the most helpful thing that Pastor Ross showed us here as well, if you could have a one, a one, Ager, maybe more than one, 
that actually summarizes the confirmed words that God has spoken over you, who you are, what are the things you call them, where you're supposed to be right now, and that's ever ever growing. It's not a stale document. It's ever, ever. Mm -hmm. But if, if you could take all the years of journals you have, or if your walk is new, start afresh and start to compile that, that would be the thing that would help you to make decisions for the rest of your life. And every decision wouldn't feel like a new one that you have to make from scratch. Every job offer that comes your way, every difficult time you're in, would make sense in mind of what God has already told you to do and who you should be. So, that's the end of it. We've spoken about this at length and I'm not going to speak about it more now. 